Thursday night football in Statesboro, Georgia, but not just any game, a Peach State rivalry. Georgia State and Georgia Southern, these two teams know each other well, but this Georgia State team, they come in hot. Last week on Saturday, surviving against Louisiana, it came down to this play. Gavin Pringle in the end zone, his third interception of the season. And for the very first time, Georgia State was able to beat Louisiana. It is their fastest to bowl eligibility in program history. And you can imagine the celebration in the locker room was on. But a quick turnaround today to face another very good team in the Sun Belt East. Georgia State at 3-1. and one. Keep in mind, James Madison in their second year transitioning to FBS. They are not eligible for the Sun Belt championship game so georgia state up there near the top at three and one georgia southern close behind at two and one and we are fired up to be with you on this thursday courtney lyle alongside former georgia quarterback hudson mason taylor davis is on the sidelines for us and man talking to both coaching staffs this rivalry it's the real deal yeah well in rivalry games weird things can happen right and if this game is anything like last year you're going to get a lot of points you're going to get a lot of yards and you got two high potent offenses with quarterbacks that have played a lot of football with a lot of disposal to disperse the ball too and both these teams need this win you've just checked out the, the conference standings a must win as these teams want to stay on track for bowl eligibility and winning the conference well let's talk about some of those playmakers starting with georgia state you've got not one but two players that could be the sunbelt player of the year yeah and they happen to play the two most important positions offensively you start with darren granger the quarterback who needs 15 total yards tonight to break the school record for uh, career total yards he's the total package is what he is he can do it he can beat you with his arm he can beat you with his legs you got to account for the off script and the off schedule plays and you can't fall asleep defensively because when he hands the ball off to marcus carroll he's handed it off to a guy who's third in the country in rushing yards per game so georgia southern defensively is going to have their hands full yeah these two keep defensive coordinators around the country up late at nine but look no secret georgia southern they want to throw the football and davis bren the tulsa transfer he makes them go yeah they it, They've been throwing it really well all year. They're leading the conference in passing yards per game. I think the concern for them tonight is the turnovers. Four turnovers last week, and it's become a problem and really a theme for Davis Brin. 11 interceptions on the year, and so watch out for that tonight. It's a very opportunistic defense for Georgia State, especially in the red zone. Georgia State has won the last three over Georgia Southern, and Taylor caught up with Georgia State head coach Sean Elliott. Thank you, Fort Naval Coach. The stage is set for this rivalry game. Two teams looking to control their destiny. What's the message of your team to take advantage of the moment? It's good who we are. We've got a great bunch of men on this sideline right here. We played really well. They love one another. We're going to play hard tonight. It's a good football team over there. It's a great game. We love playing against our We've been playing against these guys for 30 years. We're ready to go. What are the defensive keys against this pass heavy offense? <laughs> Intercepted. <laughs> we love to see it. Best of luck, Coach. Yeah, so, you know, we just got to play smart. I mean, we got to play really good. So, we'll see how it goes. Good luck. Thank you. Tenny, Taylor, I think he is fired up and ready to go. Something is cooking in Statesboro tonight. We got a great football game on deck for you. Kickoff coming up when you come back. We're ready to go here in Statesboro. Georgia Southern won the toss. They will take the ball first. Something that we're watching, one of these matchups, this passing offense against this passing defense, it would seem like Southern has the advantage. Yeah, it's a fun matchup, and it should be a good one tonight. Georgia Southern leading the conference and passing yards. And, you know, this defense for Georgia State has given up a lot of, a lot of yards in the air, mainly because people have, have, been, have been trying to uh, throw the ball and run defense very well. Great McAllister kicking this one off and it boots it into the end zone for a touchback. So Davis Brent, first time that we'll see him, he'll start this game. He has come in, he's a sixth year player. They are so confident. Talking to Brian Ellis, their offensive coordinator, they're really confident in what he can do. Oh, they should be, he's played a lot of football, transferred from Tulsa, has seen a lot of different coverages, hard to confuse them and I think Chad Staggs, the defensive coordinator for Georgia State, understands that. What he's going to try to do is really change up that pitcher in the secondary and try to get him to hold on the football, and hopefully that allows this really good pass rush for Georgia State to get home. 
They told us Davis Brin is the reason why they control their own destiny. One win away from bowl eligibility. Quick pass to Caleb Hood. The top target in this Georgia Southern arsenal. And he's stopped by Tai Chi Leach. How much stress is put on a quarterback in this offense when you have so many skilled guys running so many things and they go quick? Yeah, they go quick. They push tempo to get the plays in and out. And I think that challenges defensively. You can't substitute as often as you want to. J.J. McAfee in motion, the tight end. Brent will fake the handoff going over the top, and the pass is complete. Just past the 46-yard line to Marcus Sanders. But you see all these linebackers up at the line of scrimmage and just a little bit of a play action threat gets them to jump up and he finds Marcus Sanders Jr. on a quick seam, kind of a quick glance route for a nice completion and a first down. Sanders Jr. did not play last week against ULM. He's got, this is just his third catch on the season. Again, 19 different guys have caught a pass. John Trey Hunter, anybody surprised that he's getting to the quarterback? No, that's his fifth and a half sack on the year and he's a guy that can beat you and one right here to the left number one he is very good you might want to get a blocker on him but he comes free off the edge right there georgia southern boston protection and this is a guy who defensively chad stacks told us the, the the scouts and the nfl teams are constantly coming to see all 32 teams would not be surprised to see him drafted first in the Sun Belt this year that's the type of praise he got from his defensive coordinator. This is a guy that's moved to inside linebacker this year, too. Back to Caleb Hood they go. To the 49-yard line, about two yards more than the original line of scrimmage before that sack. Ronald Cooper on the tackle. You can see here early in this first drive the urgency to get Hood the ball. He's very talented, very electric. He creates his own touches and one of the best in the conference in what he's able to do with the ball after his hands and yards after, yards after the catch. And the consistency, this is his 26th straight game with a reception. Not a bad streak. Third and eight at midfield for Southern. Bren running out of time on the move. Just throws it away towards the air where Dalen Cobb was, but pass incomplete as Anthony Bloom gave him not a lot of time to think about it. No, but really good coverage in the secondary from Georgia State and they decide to rush for and play coverage, and this is really a coverage act. Nothing open. Davis Brent has nowhere to go with the football. And Davis Brent, as talented he is as a thrower, is not going to beat you with his legs. And so it's one of those off-script plays where when nothing's open, using the, your legs as a check down is, is not his type of game. So Georgia State able to keep him inside the pocket there. I think Georgia State defensive coordinator Chad Staggs was a little relieved they didn't have to face a running quarterback this yeah. week. <laughs> Jakari Carter is back for State as Alex Smith's punt rolls into the end zone. And so out comes number three in white. That is Darren Granger. 15 yards of total offense from setting the Georgia State career record. Yeah. I mean, when you t when you say total, the thing that comes to mind for me is he's the total package. And that's what the stats embody. He can beat you with his arm. He can beat you with his legs. And you can see here, they're getting into empty. They are very dynamic in some of the empty quarterback run game. He's rushed for over 360 yards on the season. Keep in mind, too, that number is affected by the sack total. He'll turn around and hand it off on the first play. It's a pickup of two. And you would think that it would be Marcus Carroll getting the handoff, but it's actually Freddie Brock making his second appearance this season, the transfer from Maine. Davion Rhodes on the stop. Second and eight. Off play action, trying to go over the top of the field to Tyleek Williams, a guy they emphasized getting the ball to more last week against Louisiana. Yeah, the speedster out of the slot, who they like to try to find different ways that time, line up in the slot and just run a quick slant. But the pressure internally right in the face of Darren Granger leads to an inaccurate pass. Marcus Carroll in the game at running back. Georgia State with a third down. They are first in the Sun Belt in third down conversions, converting 51% of the time. Granger looking towards Robert Lewis. 
He's got him falling to his knees, and he's in just the right spot to move the chains. Well, it starts with the protection. Darren Granger's offensive line gives him time to find the one-on-one -on -one matchup with Robert Lewis on Hickman to the boundary. And that boundary corner matchup is something that Brandon Bailey, the defensive coordinator, told us was going to be a big matchup with Robert Lewis in this game. Back to Robert Lewis they go, back to back to their leading wide receiver. He's got 561 receiving yards and counting and five touchdowns. A, 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 a guy who before last week against Louisiana had been targeted a lot. Louisiana did a good job of kind of taking him out of the game plan. And, you know, that's one thing Brandon Bailey wants to do. He wants to play man into the boundary and not have to have a safety over the top. Granger looking for him again. Just missed him. Demel Hickman riding the hip of Robert Lewis. They're going after him. Yeah. I mean, you can see here early in the first drive, they want to get the ball in the hands of Robert Lewis, and rightfully so. He gets the best of, of Hickman on that third down, but Hickman then comes back and plays nice, tight man-to-man -man coverage right there. So they bunch four at the top of your screen. Robert Lewis still by himself at the bottom. This is where they're so dangerous, because They will check to some type of quarterback run game if they don't have the numbers. They're just going right back to Lewis. And the pass swatted away. Hickman keeps getting tested, and he's past the last two. Well, it's the same type of route, same type of matchup that we just saw on the previous third down. Georgia Southern brings all out, cover zero. They bring the house, and they put Hickman on an island again. It's just a stop route to the boundary. And this time, Hickman gets the best of it. It's a great job of continuing to fight through the play and knock it out at the very end. Kate Loggins on to punt. Caleb Hood back to receive for Southern. Hopping around. And Georgia Southern able to take it to the 35-yard line. Opening drives, no points for either team on their first possession. Possession number two coming up for Southern when we come back. ESPN Thursday Night College Football is brought to you by Chick-fil-A. The new Honey Pepper Pimento Chicken Sandwich has arrived at Chick-fil-A. Enjoy it for a limited time. to go get the tub of ice cream, settle in for a good rivalry matchup. Courtney Lyle and Hudson Mason, Taylor Davis on the sidelines from Statesboro, pass complete to Derwin Burgess from Davis Brin. No secret what Georgia Southern wants to do. They love to throw the football. It's a quarterback's dream, isn't it? No, it is. I mean, and especially with Clay Helton, where he's been, the quarterbacks that he's coached from Memphis to USC, he's had a lot of success and just uh, recruiting and developing quarterbacks and he got a guy in the portal from Tulsa and Davis Brin that's played a lot of football and has a lot of experience They go to the ground game and Jalen White Explosive play he crosses midfield falls over past the 45 they'll mark him at the 43 yard line in Georgia State territory uh, The pass game gets a lot of recognition But this run game for Georgia Southern with Jalen White is is kind of the, the quiet untold secret of this offense they they can run it when they need to and even when they have to and here he bounces it to the perimeter and uses speed to get a first down. Yeah, Jalen White, the Sunbelt Offensive Player of the Week. Davis Brand looking for Derwin Burgess and a P.I. coming in. Yeah, I think they're going to get tight. Ty G. Leach with a pass interference kind of reaching in and pulling at the last second. And Pringle was over there too. He's the one that had the game-saving interception. Defense, number three. Ball be placed in the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. Yeah, they call that on Gavin Pringle. Yeah, they end up calling it in, on Pringle, who to, that you just mentioned had the big interception to win the game last week against Louisiana, and kind of gets that offhand right there on the on the right hand of of Burgess Jr. and just yanks a little bit. Yeah, that's. You know, a good throw, good catchable back shoulder ball by the quarterback, and sometimes when it's not caught, that's the perk of, of giving your receiver a chance. It's, it could be incomplete, it could be caught, but it could also be called a P.I. Southern will absolutely take that. It puts them at the 29-yard line. Bryn going to Jalen White. And again, this is a guy, Jalen White, their goal is to get him 25 touches a week, whether it's handing off or throwing him the football. Yeah, that's a good bit of touches. Yeah. You know, I mean, 
I bet he loves it. Yeah, 29 touches last week. They'll sprinkle in some some touches in the pass game, get him involved in some of the screens, but he isn't shy about and running backs are really never shy about asking for the ball more and more as the game goes on. They told us all 32 scouts from every NFL team have come to watch Jalen White practice or in a game. Right up the middle he goes, falling forward over the 25-yard line to pick up a five on the play before Justin Abraham got to him. And this is this is the part of the offense that I think can really take this offense to the next level. Tenth in the conference and rushing this year, only averaging a, 130 yards per game. If they can create some type of balance and take some type, just even a little bit of pressure off of Bren, that's going to create even more opportunities in the passing game. Play action, throwing it up deep into the end zone, Caleb Hood! His fourth touchdown catch of the season, this one for 24 yards. Well, we talked about Bren's best attribute, which is identifying what coverage the defense is in, and pre-snap, Georgia State plays man, it's clear it's man, single eye safety. And Clay Helton and offense coordinator Brian Ellis call a slot fade from the boundary. The slot receiver just runs a fade. And Caleb Hood beats Ronald Cooper one-on-one -on -one for a big touchdown. Caleb Hood, the Georgia Southern record holder for career receptions in receiving yards, adding to his total. Already three catches tonight for Hood. Yep, sees the coverage, knows where he wants to go with the football. And he finds his fifth-year senior, Caleb Hood, for a big touchdown. Eagles up seven. And it's something offensive coordinator Brian Ellis spoke about with us this week, that this guy is a quarterback in a wide receiver's body. He asks a lot of questions, so much so that they actually had to put extra meeting chairs in Coach Ellis's office so that he could sit down, watch film after practice, and dig into those questions a little bit more. Coaches rave about his want to, to get better, to know more, and it's something he's executed on the field even in this first quarter tonight, guys. Yeah, absolutely, Taylor. We're talking about Caleb Hood. It's not just him, too, but he's showing up in Coach's office. Derwin Burgess, along with J.J. McAfee, the tight end. Those are their three chairs now. They've had installed in the O.C.'s office because they were in there so much. Williams on the return, and a flag comes out. Ted Pitts is our referee tonight. <laughs> Discussing what this call was. There is no foul for a block in the back on number 25. The ball will be placed at the dead ball spot. It's first and 10. Well, I want to let you know about an ABC College football triple header that we have for you on Saturday. It starts with number four, Florida State hosting Wake Forest at noon, and then number seven, Texas and BYU. We cap the day with Coach Prime in Colorado at the Rose Bowl against number 23, UCLA. That's coming up this weekend on ABC. So second time tonight, we get to see Darren Granger and the Georgia State offense work. Handoff to Marcus Carroll, and he is immediately met at the line of scrimmage with authority by MJ Stroud. And these are the type of plays, when you got a good offensive run game like Georgia State, one of the best in the conference. you got to have guys that win one-on-one -on -one up front. That's what Stroud does here. Sheds, uses violent hands to get rid of the blocker and makes a nice tackle for no gain. Again, Marcus Carroll is third in the nation in rushing yards per game. Tyleek Williams with the catch to the 21-yard line. 
before he was dropped by Mark Stampley. And this third down offense is such a storyline coming in. As much as this Georgia Southern third down defense is second, you got the best off third down offense in Georgia State, the second best third third down defense. But one of the reasons Georgia State's been so good, it's been a lot of third and shorts. That was something that defensive coordinator Brandon Bailey told us tonight. Got to keep him out of third and short, put him in more predictable passing situations. They're one for two on third down this evening. Granger over the top of the field to Jakari Carter, and they convert. Southern decides to play some soft zone, and Carter lines up to the left and just kind of runs a dig route 10 yards and finds the soft spot in the zone. Link up with his quarterback. The 12 yard pickup to the 33, and Georgia Southern is going to call a timeout, timeout. as State try to Georgia use a little Southern. tempo. That's their first timeout of the first half. As fast as they could go with them resetting the chains. But we step aside, Georgia Southern using its first time out tonight. They're up by seven here at Statesboro. Here's our end of the month featured lineup. First, we have NBA Friday doubleheader on ESPN starting at 7.30 Eastern. The Heat and Celtics tip off, followed by Warriors Kings. And then Sunday afternoon, Mexico City Grand Prix on ABC. Monday Night Football will be in Detroit for the first time since 2018 with the Lions hosting the Raiders. It's coming up this weekend. I keep forgetting it's Thursday, but I'll take it. A whole weekend of good football to watch. Darren Granger, the quick pass out to Robert Lewis, who has been targeted several times. And Taylor, it's been so much fun to watch Granger develop into this program at Georgia State. It really is. I got the chance to speak with him this week, and I asked, what's the biggest change he's seen in himself? He said, I'm not forcing things as much anymore. He said, you have the tendency to want to make something happen all on your own. He said, the more I let things develop, like we see right now, yeah, and this is one of the X factors for him is yeah. that he is mobile. Right, and he knows that about his ability, which is what led him to forcing some things early in his career. He said, this year, I'm settling in. I'm taking the check down if the big play isn't open. Once I stopped forcing things, all assets of the game slowed down. And he has already broken the, broken the school record for total offense in a career. Set that earlier tonight. Pass complete to Kadarius Thompson before he steps out to about a yard short of the first down. And, and what's crazy is he really hasn't played quarterback, the quarterback position a lot. He was a receiver for most of his career in high school, went to Furman, then transferred from Furman to, to Georgia State. And so he's really playing a quarterback position for really the second year. Marcus Carroll has a hole. The first down and then sub to the 34-yard line. They start to push tempo like th with this. Man, did they become dangerous. You can see the right side of this hole. What a fantastic block by Avery Reese, the center and right guard, Trevor Timmons. Back to the air game, and wow, they just keep going right back to Robert Lewis. That's going to be his fourth catch tonight. Yeah, they, they are really going after Hickman right there in that boundary corner position, which is something they told us they were going to do. What will be interesting to see is with Brandon Bailey, he didn't want to have to roll coverage or put a safety over there. He'd rather take that safety and put it in the box to stop the run. Jakari Carter in motion. Carroll gets the call. Should be right at the line they needed. And they'll move the chains first down. Kind of becomes a, the matchup within the game is what do you do with these safeties? If you play too high, Georgia State is so good in the run game that they're going to take advantage of that. You drop a safety in the box, they're going to throw some of these routes out there on soft corners. Just over the head of Robert Lewis. And this time a safety again drops in the box and the Granger sees that. And he takes the slant route one-on-one. -on -one. See right here, that's an RPO. He's got an ability to hand the ball off. He sees one high safety, and he likes the matchup there to Lewis and just throws it a little bit out of his frame. Seven for 11. Granger started nine for nine on Saturday in Louisiana and back to the ground game with their quarterback. Got the first down, takes a hard hit as he goes down. T.J. Smith in there for Southern. They are as good as I've seen in college football in the empty set with quarterback run game. They get five guys in the box more than times and not. They are going to call some type of design run for the quarterback. Oh, my goodness. The wide open hole and Marcus Carroll ate it up. Touchdown, Georgia State. Well, that was an absolute offensive clinic yeah. by Georgia State offensively. Just the balance. You saw some throws in there mixed into Robert Lewis. 
You saw the run, the quarterback design run with Granger, and then they finish it off right here. Fantastic push, great block by Amon Green, the tight end right there, 85. That creates just enough of a crease for Marcus Carroll to get in the end zone. So Isaac Kone, who won the competition this week in practice, he will be doing PATs and field goals today. It's up and good. Five first downs for Georgia State on that drive. Yeah, and you know, you, the ability to get into really any type of play you want. Here it's a, it's a read, some type of read. He hands the ball off, and I mean, as talented as Marcus Carroll is, you let him just kind of almost walk into the end zone untouched like that, it's going to be a long night. It, this, it's well documented, it's well advertised. This Georgia State offense led by Marcus Carroll and Darren Granger, they are a headache to stop. And this Georgia Southern defense knew coming in, their hands were going to be full. We saw a little bit of a glimpse of that chess match going on there of what is Brandon Bailey going to do. Is he going to continue to play kind of soft man on these receivers? And if you do, Granger's just going to keep throwing it out there. I mean, if you play too high safeties and you want to give safety help over the top to protect your corner, well, then you're you're kind of light in the box to stop the run. The chess match in this game will be very interesting. The adjustments we see both of these teams make. DeAndre Buchanan will run this one out of the end zone for Southern and spins around about the 22-yard line. So 4.56 to go here in the first quarter. Davis Brin and company back to work. It was a touchdown pass to Caleb Hood on their second drive that got the Eagles up on the board. Yeah, really the most important thing through the first couple drives for Brin is he's taking care of the football. You know, turnovers have been a problem coming in with 11 interceptions and really offensively four turnovers last week But so far through the first couple drives he's seeing things really well And that number is skewed a bit by the Wisconsin game. He had five interceptions in that game alone He's thrown two picks in the last two outings for Southern Ground game back to the original line of scrimmage no gain on the play as Justin Abraham came in hot and they talked about recruiting Davis Brin, and they looked back at Tulsa. Last year, he wasn't healthy for Tulsa, so they looked at the previous year and thought, could his skill set fit into what we want to do with our air attack? And they thought, absolutely. Brent stepping up in the pocket to throw. Pass is complete, and they've got the first down, and it's back to Caleb Hood. It was a great job of Davis Brin. Watch him step up in the pocket right here. Not the, the initial read isn't open. See him kind of climb the pocket right there and find that window to Hood for a first down. It was Jeremiah Johnson whose helmet came off for Georgia State. Jalen White. Justin Abraham grabbed a hold and took a ride, a three-yard pickup for Jalen White. <laughs> Jeremiah Johnson back on the field after setting out that one play for his helmet coming off for the state defense. way to a first down and to midfield a pickup of nine one of the things if you're going to play receiver obviously you got to be able to catch this ball in this pass out of the offense but you better be able to block and help out your teammates as well Derwin Burgess there leading the block for his running back and creates a nice scene for a first down you can kind of just feel the balance here early on by Brian Ellis doing a really nice job of kind of getting all of his playmakers involved early in the game and making them feel involved in the game plan Burgess in motion Davis Brin, the quick release right back to Burgess, and he makes the catch, even though it was a little off balance. Yep, soft corner out there to the field, and they take advantage of that out route. 
And that's the type of coverage you want to throw that into. And Clay Helton has done a phenomenal job already here in his second year. Get to a bowl game last year, a win tonight would clinch a bowl game for them in the second straight year. Flags out. And right into the hands of Taiji Leach, but I think this was a free play, a penalty on yeah, Georgia State. Offsides on Georgia State. That's the one time as a quarterback you can just throw it up, just take a chance. You know, you're told most of the time, don't just throw it up, or you got a free Offside. play. Defense, number 24. That's a five yard penalty where we play first down. That's on Ronald Cooper playing the star position for Georgia State. And that's the old play that Aaron Rodgers has made famous for all those young quarterbacks studying tape. Become a master of just using some snap count mani snap count manipulation for a free play and so many times you see those You see him throw a post over the top for a touchdown Ball to 35 now in state territory Bren rolling out looking to throw back across his body And throws it a bit behind his intended target of Jalen White sliding on the turf Jalen White was wide open. This was a design throwback to White on a wheel route up the sideline. And I thought if White would have just kind of settled about 10 yards down the sideline, he would have been wide open. You can see him back to the left here. Instead, he just keeps kind of drifting down the field and almost runs himself out of the route and out of the window. They'll hand it off to White. He's got room on the edge, the first down. Gaining more to the 21-yard line before Abraham got there. Brian Miller, the left tackle, the seventh-year senior for this Georgia Southern offensive line. It's a nice block. Kind of seals the edge for Jalen White. This is a really veteran offensive line. It's got a deep running back room. It's a 15-yard pickup. Quick out to Caleb Hood. To the 17-yard line. Now this offensive line, you mentioned they returned three of five starters. They have Brandon Miller, who's about 85 years old, <laughs> playing in the left tackle spot. I like what uh, is... Uh, I guess his locker room nickname, the Team Dad, is what they call him. He's been in college for so long. Yeah, their offensive coordinator, Brian Ellis, joked with us that they went to high school together. <laughs> Seven years of college football. Brent to the near side. The pass batted away. He was looking for Caleb Hood, but Ronald Cooper stuck his hand out. Can you imagine seven years of college football? That's a long time. I spent five years in college, and at the end of five, you're you're kind of you know you're like you're ready for the next step. Seven years. I mean, that's that's almost two different presidents amount of time. And Brian Miller he had a really serious hip injury in 2019 too, and they were afraid he may never walk again. But he's been able to go out there and play more football. of people on his tail and gets it out but the pass dropped by Jalen White all kinds of pressure you know, and what does Chad Staggs a defensive coordinator for Georgia State do as soon as they kind of get down here in the red area they show pressure and they bring some of it they bring five and it forces Davis Brin to have to get out of the pocket and essentially just throw the football away it's what makes this red zone defense for Georgia State one of the best in the country First in the conference, but seventh in the country in red zone defense. So a 35-yard field goal attempt for Michael Lance. His career long is 48. It's up, and it's good. Three more points for Georgia Southern. But one of their keys, Hudson, they talked to us about... When you get it in the red zone, a field goal is a loss on a drive against one of the best red zone defenses in the nation. And you don't hear coaches say that a lot. In fact, you hear coaches say the exact opposite. Like, hey, we want to end every drive with some type of kick. A field goal for an offense is viewed as a win, but 
Not in this game and not if you're Georgia Southern. I mean, Clay Helton said we will consider going for it on fourth down in the red zone, and we have got to score touchdowns. It's hard to even get down in the red zone against this Georgia State defense. So when you got when you get down there, you have to uh, convert them for touchdowns. Yeah, Georgia State's defense seventh in the nation. Opponents only converting 66 percent of the time. It's first in the Sun Belt. You look at the the history of this rivalry. A lot of these games have been so close. The even evenness is really, especially the last three years. You go back to last year, over a thousand yards of total offense in this game, and it came down to a really the last possession and so these 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 series in the red zone where one team kicks a field goal and one doesn't could have a huge impact on the outcome Tyleek Williams back for state and that kick goes out of bounds so the flag comes out Kick out of bounds, kicking team. Ball be placed on the 35 yard line. First down, Georgia State. Well, let's take a look at the Taco Bell Live Moss student section. All season long, student sections across the country are competing to be the Live Moss student section of the year. Download the Taco Bell app to learn more. Got the Joker. Pretty nice student section for Thursday night, but it is a rivalry game. It is a rivalry game, and it's a great environment in here tonight. And you can see the home home field advantage here at Georgia Southern, one of the best winning percentages in this stadium in college football. Davon Gilmore <laughs> drops Marcus Carroll. And the clock winding down here in the first quarter. <laughs> First quarter has not disappointed in our Peach State rivalry. <laughs> Two of the top teams in the Sun Belt East battling Georgia Southern on top of Georgia State right now by three. Their RPO game, which we know is lead, is it had a very, very nice drive. Hopefully, we can show things up this quarter. Thanks for the time. Thank you. Yeah, so far, rivalry has not disappointed. Courtney Lyle, Hudson Mason, and Taylor Davis with you. Georgia State back on offense here. Georgia Southern was held to a field goal on their last drive. Last time we saw the state offense out, they put on a clinic, but Southern ready for that run by Marcus Carroll. Yeah, short third down there. We've talked about the matchup right here with the number one third down offense and the number third town, uh, the second third down defense in the Sun Belt. That time, Georgia Southern gets the best of them, run blitzes them on third and short and forces a punt. Caleb Hood back as Cade Logan set to punt for Georgia State. Georgia State has won the last three meetings against their in-state rival. They let this one roll, and Caleb Hood will fall on it at about the 16-yard line. All right, so what did you like most about Southern's last drive that resulted in that field goal? Well, I think they are showing balance. They're trying to get the run game going. Uh, dispersing the ball through Bryn to a lot of different receivers. You're seeing Duran Burwis get involved. Obviously, Caleb Hood, one of the best receivers in this conference, is being targeted early. You know, I still come I come back to the decision making of Bryn is going to be a huge factor in this game. And then how much can they get this run game going? Tenth in the Sun Belt in rushing offense. And if they can get some type of production to kind of level out the safeties of this defense, which will allow the passing offense to maybe take some more shots. They'll hand it off to David Bedinga, who we expect to get some more carries because O.J. Arnold will be out in this game, and the flag comes out.
personal foul, face mask, 29 defense. That's a 15-yard penalty added to the end of the run. First down. That's Ty G. Leach, the face mask against the Lehigh transfer. With an offense that's been struggling to find explosive plays, a, a penalty like that is, is essentially like giving them an explosive play. You see Leach right there, number 29 for Georgia State, just gets his hand out there and it grabs the face mask of, of the running back. So that takes it to the 33-yard line, still on the Georgia Southern side of the field. Bodinga is the running back. Bren will keep it. Going to the near side. Pass is complete to Daylon Cobb. Pass midfield, steps out around the 43-yard line in state territory. Now Daylon Cobb is getting a catch, and he's starting to get involved. You are seeing how the best part of this offense is they use a bunch of different receivers. All five eligible receivers on a given play can get the football, and this time it's Cobb using a little bit of leverage to create separation on a man-out route for a nice, nice gain and a first down. Now four different players have caught a pass for Southern. That was a 24-yard pickup on the catch to Cobb. Cobb goes in motion here. Brent's going to step up and run the football slide, starting at about the 40. That's where they mark him. Pick up a three. And one of the things I love about this, this offense is they, yeah, they'll get it to Hood, and they've got their primary receivers. They want to get targets, but they really do do a great job of using all five eligible or four eligible receivers on a given play. And, you know, as a defensive coordinator, Chad Staggs recognizes that, and he's got to be really selective and choosing when he wants to pressure and play man and when he wants to drop and play zone. Bren rolling out, signaling to David Badinga. He'll heave it downfield. One of the things, too, Brian Ellis, their offensive coordinator, talked to us about was how much that puts on Davis Bren. His challenge with this offense is you've got to understand all five skill positions, what they're doing, where they're going. You've got to be so smart, and you got to get the football out quick. Cerebral, you got to think quick. you got to see things before they happen. I mean, these are all the attributes that make up a, a high-level quarterback. And, and you've got the experience that Bryn has as a three-year starter in college football. It, it, it can be hard to fool him on a play like this, right? He's looking to the sideline, trying to get into the right play. Offensive coordinator Brian Ellis sees, sees something that he likes. And They've stacked wide receivers on either side. Third down. Brent scrambling to create more time for himself. And just closest to Marcus Sanders, incomplete. Yeah, and this is now back-to-back -back times on third down. The Georgia State has done a tremendous job of kind of keeping Brent inside the pocket. He's had to basically escape backwards. He can't get up in the pocket when nothing's open. That pocket collapses, and he essentially just has to kind of throw it away. So the Panthers defense forces Alex Smith to come on the field and punt for Southern. Ja'Cory Carter back for Georgia State. I just take a delay of gain here. Take the extra five yards for room to punt it. Delay game, kicking team. That penalty's been declined. Still fourth down. Georgia State says, we're not going to give you the five extra yards. We're going to nope. decline it, and you're going to have to play the game. put it inside the 10-yard line with less room. I think Georgia Southern was trying to get Georgia State to jump off sides with the, with the thought of maybe going for it on fourth and short if they were able to get them. three on Georgia State. Saturday, we've got a much anticipated boxing matchup for you. Tyson Fury and Francis Ngannou from Saudi Arabia. It's on ESPN Plus pay-per-view with coverage of the main card starting at 2 Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. It can be purchased at ESPNPlus.com slash top hyphen rank. 
So Georgia State starts backed up at the four yard line. We'll bring it to about the eight. Trayvon Locke on the stop. Shamar Bartholomew on the stop, and that brings up another third down. Georgia State three for, or excuse me, two for four on third down today. Yeah, 50 per, 50 percent, right? Coin flip probability on third down, which is exactly their season seasonal average. Let's see what Brandon Bailey decides to do here. He's played a little zone. He's mixed in a little man. He said on third down he had to do a really good job of holding their water and changing the presentation. So Granger couldn't figure out what they're in. The best third down team in the Sun Belt will not convert their pass incomplete. Looking for Jakari Carter. They targeting Carter, but they're just they're not even close to being on the same page. And this time Brandon Bailey and this Georgia Southern defense wins. They rolled a one high safety and Granger and his and his receiver Carter just really not even on the same page. Brandon Bailey, that was the biggest question coming into the season for Georgia Southern is who was going to take over this defense. They lost Will Harris, their defensive coordinator. He went to the NFL, went to the Chargers, and they lucked out finding Brandon Bailey, who was a Buffalo. Caleb Hood on the move, and Southern's going to have great field position inside the 40 and a three-point lead for Georgia Southern at home. Well, a special moment here in the second quarter at Georgia Southern. Paul Johnson was honored. He's going into the College Football Hall of Fame in December. He will be the third from Southern to go into the Hall of Fame along with Tracy Hamm and Adrian Peterson. He spent five seasons as the head coach of Georgia Southern. Two-time 1AA national champions and then went on to coach 11 seasons at Georgia Tech. 82 and 60 at Georgia Tech. Nine bowl games was the three-time ACC coach of the year. I know you got to play against his teams too, Hudson. Yeah, I'm one-on-one -on -one against Paul Johnson in the triple option offense and have had many opportunities to face him and he is uh, one of the great all-time coaches and a big congrats to him going in the College Football Hall of Fame. They swing it out to Derwin Burgess dancing down that far sideline to the 16-yard line. And they pick up 21. Very Courtney. Now all of a sudden you look back to that punt that's made Georgia State have to back up. Then the field position battle. Now all of a sudden on one play, Georgia Southern has got the ball inside the red zone where this Georgia State defense has been a lead all year, seventh in the country. Most teams don't even get down to this point, so when you do, you have got to find ways to run the football. It's a really good run defense. And Brian Ellis told us the goal, we have got to get in the end zone. They did not do that the last time they were in the red zone. The pass to J.J. McAfee, the tight end to the 11. Stopped by Justin Abraham. Even something as small as that, a check down in the red zone is huge. I mean, you're just taking kind of a small profit right there. It's a nice job of Bren of not forcing anything, taking that check down, and now you're in second and five, and you can really do a couple different things here if you want to. You want to run it? You can. You want an RPO if you want to take a shot at the end zone. Caleb Hood, his favorite target is in the slot. Play action. Bren keeps it, tucks it, and runs. <laughs> to the eight yard line. I'm not for sure really what happened here. Brent pulls the ball out of the belly of the running back and looks like he goes to throw it and his receiver is almost blocking. Watch this right here. He's kind of goes to throw this and his receiver is blocking the safety. And so now they have pulled Davis Brent. Not unusual to see this JC French, the redshirt freshman out of Roswell, Georgia, the transfer from Memphis comes in. He's 11 for 12 through the air. And Georgia State's going to take a timeout. Timeout. Yeah. Georgia State. That's their first timeout of the first half. This will be a 30-second timeout. But Georgia Southern has timeout. been so high on J.C. French. He's just a young quarterback. Yeah, young, but a little bit more athletic than Bren. And I think when you get down here in the red zone, where the windows become smaller and tighter as a quarterback, uh, you want to be able to run the football. And I, I think this is purely by design. This is specifically to try to get the legs of J.C. French 
involved in the run game. Nine carries for 39 yards on the season for French. His longest has been 18 yards. You know, third and two here. I, I would be shocked to see anything but a run. I've said that before, and you see Chad Staggs, a defensive coordinator for Georgia State, who's done a tremendous job coming from Coastal Carolina, really kind of revamping the culture of this defense. Has done an incredible job, especially putting a different game plan together every week down here in the red zone. So Southern leaves J.C. French in. He's trying to weave his way through the defense, but it's not going to be enough to move the chain. Jordan Venzial on the stop. Well, they faked the run with J.C. French, and they're trying to kind of throw it to the receiver, the tight end in the middle, hoping that those linebackers for Georgia State would bite on the run, and it just... See, it's a little play action fake, hoping that his tight end right there would be open. Georgia State didn't bite on it at all. So they put Bren and Jalen White back out there. They told us they would not be afraid to go for it on fourth down inside the 40. What do you think? Uh, <laughs> you got a smile I'm a little less face. risky. I think I would take the points. <laughs> Jalen White. I think that push at the end is going to be it's going to be close, but I thought the push at the end might have been the difference. Yeah, it is first down. Yeah. Maybe not exactly the tush push, but yeah. got a push there. Well, it might not be a tush push, but it was some type of push. No matter what it is, it was enough for a first down. And I mean, you asked me what I thought. I, plays Ooh. like that remind me I, I'm not built to be a, a college football coach because I don't like living on the edge <laughs> that much. Yeah, especially yes. against his yeah. defense in the red zone. Yeah, who's seventh in the nation in red zone defense. But a fresh set of downs, first and goal now for Davis Brent and Southern. Hood in motion. Brent pulls it on the read. Spins around at the five yard line by Ty G. Leach. Well, he gets whacked by John Trey Hunter. Hunter, who had the sack on the first possession, had gone quiet a little bit, but watch Hunter come I'm rolling off the edge there and lay the wood on Davis Brin. So now second and goal from the five. Brent looked like he was trying to turn around and hand the football off to White, and he wasn't there. Yeah, it looked like a speed option play into the boundary. And again, it, it looks like the quarterback and running back are just kind of not on the same page, whether, you know, the running back was supposed to pause for a second. It, it just looks a little bit off, you know? I mean, it looked like there was supposed to be an, an initial fake right there and then a speed option into the boundary. The problem is, is this is now the third kind of busted play in the red zone for Georgia Southern. So now they go pistol, putting Jalen White behind Davis Brin, and Georgia State calls timeout, timeout for the State. second time. That's their second timeout. You can see how much half. Sean this Elliott values timeout. whether Georgia Southern's going to kick a field goal or not. He's already burned two timeouts on this drive in the red zone. So Georgia State has to take that timeout, but a good opportunity, too, for Georgia Southern to Take a breath here. Make sure everybody's on the same page. The, the one thing that sticks out to me right now is, is, is Georgia Southern not having much success running the ball into the teeth of this Georgia State front. You know, and you're sitting here during this timeout, your offensive coordinator, Brian Ellis, thinking, you know, it becomes hard to throw the ball down here. But Georgia State, <laughs> their run defense is really good. And that's why they're one of the best uh, red zone defenses in the country. People can't run the ball on them when, it, when they get down here. And they only give up 118 rushing yards a game. That's third in the Sun Belt, 34th in FBS. You got this stack formation by these two receivers for Southern here. Watch out for some type of man pick rub. Brent's got to go. He was still completes the pass to Jalen White at the one. He had to 
drop at least five yards back because of pressure. Yeah, it's not enough for a touchdown, but it might be enough for to convince Clay Helton to go for it. He got pressure in his face, and it almost looked like he's trying to throw the ball away, and it just lands in the in the arms of White. I mean, he's, it's a great job of kind of leading his running back. And like I said, it looks like they're going to go for it enough to convince Clay Helton to keep his offense on the field. They've already converted one fourth down here in the red zone, and Davis Brin runs up under center. They pitch it back to White. They take the risk. They get the reward. Georgia Southern converting on fourth down for the second time. And what was it, Courtney? It was a, it was a run to the perimeter, the very first attempt by this offense and Brian Ellis to get the ball on the perimeter, use the speed of his running back. He gets great perimeter blocking by his receivers. All the other runs have been straight into the teeth of Georgia State's defense. And, and this Georgia State defense at both their neck, they weren't having any success getting the push that they needed. Now how about the call of Ellis to see that, recognize it, get the ball on the perimeter, and a big conversion for a touchdown. Michael Lance, the PAT. They've stuck true to their word, they told us. Fourth and five or shorter inside the 40. They were going to go for it, and they did not once, but twice, converting on fourth down in the red zone, and Georgia Southern up on its rival by 10. Well, what an ABC College football triple header we have for you on Saturday. It starts with number four, Florida State, taking on Wake Forest at noon. And then number seven, Texas battles BYU. We cap the day with Coach Prime Colorado at number 23, UCLA. Week nine, ABC lineup. Get ready. Georgia Southern has come out ready to go. They just converted not once, but twice on fourth down inside the red zone. And their defense doing a pretty good job against Darren Granger, who is a mobile quarterback. Yeah, very mobile. I mean, this is a guy who came in averaging about eight yards per rush. And tonight, only two rushes for 15 yards. This defense for Georgia Southern in the game plan of Brandon Bailey, defensive line coach Rip Rowan. Kind of changing up the front, discouraging some of the zone reads. They've held them in check. Granger's going to roll out of the pocket, throwing on the move to Robert Lewis, the guy that has been targeted numerous times tonight and makes his sixth catch of the evening. Stopped by TJ Smith, pick up a 16. Granger dropping back the pass, batted away by the defensive line of Georgia Southern, Latrell Bullard. Yeah, the big 340 pound. Rock solid boy right there in the middle of that defense at playing that nose guard position. He gets his big ball up, and the sophomore out of Smyrna, Georgia, has really provides some, some girth and movement, soaks up a lot of double teams, which allows these linebackers and safeties in the second and third level to make a lot of tackles. Second and 10 from the 41. Marcus Carroll stopped again. And I think you know a thing or two about the defensive line coach at Georgia Southern Hudson? Yeah, look, I don't know if I'm going to promote him too much, but uh, an old buddy of mine, Rip Rowan, who I played high school football with. Look at you. Uh, yeah, can you point out which one I am? Definitely number six. Yeah, definitely number six. All 6'2", 120 pounds of me soaking wet. <laughs> Rip Rowan, the defensive line coach at Georgia Southern, number 43 right there, has, has done a really good job so far. Coach Rowan in this defense have made it third and long, and the pass incomplete as pressure on Derek Granger. Stampley in there, got a hand on it for Southern, and another stop. I don't know, that makes uh, old Rip Rowan pretty proud, right? Defensive line coaches teach their defensive line, and if you can't get to the quarterback, get your hand up. Sometimes a tip pass is just as good as anything else as a, in terms of havoc on the quarterback, and two times on that play, these defensive linemen for Georgia Southern able to get their hand up and bat it down. They have made it so tough on Georgia State tonight. This one hops into Caleb Hood's hands at the 20. And he'll make it to the 22-yard line. Georgia Southern clicking on offense, clicking on defense. They're up 17-7. 
Kevin Connors in studio coming up on the Twisted Tea Halftime Report. We'll look ahead to BYU Texas. Trevor Maddich on the ingredients to a Cougars victory. Plus, Sam Acho on the best two-way player in college football, not named Travis Hunter. And we'll check in on Syracuse and Virginia Tech over on ESPN. Courtney, coming up when you join us at the half. Thanks, guys. It's been a fun one here at Statesboro. Pitch out to Jalen White up the sideline. Yeah, that's a first down as he goes to the 35. Yeah, they get the ball on the perimeter again. The last couple drives, it's been the perimeter runs by the running backs that have kind of broken for big gains. You had the touchdown run on the perimeter, but this time a little toss sweep action. And White able to use his speed to outgain the leverage. carries for Jalen White again the ideal is to get him 25 touches whether it's on the ground or through the air and it back to him and Taiji Leach Leach is there to make the stop two yard pickup a good half for White averaging six and a half yards per pop which is you know, exactly where I think you want to be this is a pass first offense but we talked about some of the rushing concerns coming in a lot of people have tried to throw the ball on this Georgia State defense because they are really good at stopping the run. So people have just resorted to throwing it. David Badinga, the walk-on who has been thrust into a bigger role today because O.J. Arnold, their second back, not available. He takes it past the 40 to the 41-yard line, 42-yard line now. Eight of five, third down on the way. This is a... Third and short as a defensive coordinator, you're trying to figure out, is this a rundown? Do you want to run blitz? Do you want to blitz and play with pressure and play man? Chad Staggs has done a good job of kind of mixing it up. Davis Brin played a lot of football, can figure out what you're in if you don't disguise your coverage well. He's signaling for Jalen Barton to come across the field, and now he's going to throw in the football. First down, steps out at the 50. Brin directing traffic. Pick up a eight. Now Brent brings his receiver in motion, and that tells him it's man. He's got a corner running with him. And watch these two receivers for Georgia Southern. The way they just relief off, off the line of scrimmage forces Gavin Pringle, number three right there for Georgia State, to have to go over the top of what we call the get-in-the-way route. Can't say pick route, right? Right, not allowed. But all you need is a little bit of room on third and three. Patinga with the handoff. Bouldering his way up the middle to the 42-yard line. Two yards short of the first down, a pickup of eight. Shamar McCollum and Jeremiah Johnson got in there for Georgia State. It's really where you need one chunk yardage play, one play in the pass game of about 15 to 20 yards to get you in the field goal range. You see the balance that Brian Ellis has called the game with tonight. and slings it out to Caleb Wood. Moving the chains again. Minute 16 on the clock. Remember, inside of two minutes at the end of each half, the clock will stop just enough for them to move the chains. Second and two, they wrap the left guard, left tackle, and... Give the quarterback the option to hand it off or throw it to the perimeter. Got Marcus Sanders. Signal is touchdown. 30-yard strike and the first touchdown of the season for Marcus the Sanders. The is the receiver broke the plane of the goal line with the ball. Touchdown. It's that play action pass where Brent puts it in the running back's belly, sees that safety step up and bite up on it. And he takes Lord advantage of that seam route. The receiver broke the play and one-on-one -on -one coverage. The with possession and Marcus the Sanders. The previous play is under further review. They're going to review and make sure that the ball crossed the plane of the goal line, but I think he's in. 
But a great job of Davis Brin. This has been a play that they've gone to with a couple different receivers tonight. Brin just reading two high and one high safeties. If it's one high safety and they load the box, he's going to put that ball in the belly of the running back, ride it really long, and make sure those linebackers and safeties bite up. And it's a nice job of Marcus, Marcus Sanders getting some separation on the route. And all the ball has to do is cross the plane of the goal line. And it's a touchdown, and I think this is going to stand. At the yeah, further view, the to confirm this. Stands. Touchdown. And they do. It's a touchdown. The call will stand. Well, what a drive right before half for Georgia Southern to add some points already to the lead. This drive started with about three minutes left. They didn't even use any of the two timeouts that they had remaining. I mean, just a, a, a really flawless operation to get some points on the board and extend this lead before half. Again, the Georgia Southern coaching staff, they told us Davis Brin is the reason they control their own destiny, and he has looked pretty solid tonight. Yeah, and, and the questions about the turnovers that we talked about at yeah. the beginning of the game for Brin, I mean, he hasn't put the ball in harm's, in, in harm's way at all. Last two drives for Southern, 16 plays, 114 yards. They've gotten 14 points off of it. Davis Brin, by the way, 15 of 22. 195, two touchdowns. Georgia Southern's been impressive, Taylor. The guys, very different energy levels on both of these sidelines down here, but the coaches reiterated to us this week how much this rivalry means. They said a lot of these kids know each other. They grew up playing against each other, and I think the energy says a lot about the expectations both teams have coming into this one like we've talked about both controlling their destiny we'll see what the second half has in store but it feels like a season definer for both of these programs yeah, they talked about how important it is when it comes to the recruiting trail they recruit the same areas they have a ton of guys from the state of georgia they play in the same conference yeah. both in the east yeah a lot of the coaches recruit the same kids uh, a relatively new rivalry but one that is really treated us college football fans, especially in the state of Georgia, the past couple years to some really good football. Well, let's take a wait look at this week's college, college football rankings brought to you by Verbo. Um, another school in Georgia at the top there. Uh, Hudson, are you familiar with the Georgia Bulldogs? Um, I am familiar. The cocktail party this week, that's a pretty big game in these parts of the country, Georgia, Florida. A lot of intrigue around Georgia. What are they going to look like offensively without Brock Bowers? They're All-American tight end. And then Florida, who's won four out of the last five. Graham Mertz coming off really his best game against South Carolina. Be a fun one. Texas on there, too. They're going to start. Redshirt freshman Murphy at quarterback position. Quinn Ewers out with an injury, so all kinds of things to keep an eye on. Right now, Georgia State's trying to get an eye on the end zone. Batted up into the air and into the hands of Georgia Southern. Mark Stampley, the right place at the right time for the takeaway. It's what Georgia Southern's defense does best. Well, the one mistake that you couldn't make with the ball on your side of the 20, and Darren Granger decides to throw it right over the middle, tip pass, typically in zone coverage, leads to an interception. And the first big mistake of the night by really any quarterback, but Darren Granger throws it a little high. His receiver, Jakari Carter, only able to get one hand on it. And in zone coverage, so many times you see whether it's a tip ball by the defense or a tip ball by your own receiver, leads to a pick and now georgia southern able to add on maybe even more points to this before the half and remember too they didn't have to burn any of their timeouts on that last drive so they've got two timeouts right here and a minute of a minute three on the clock southern's defense loves takeaways Brent nowhere to go, has to hold on to it as he is dropped down by Javon Dennis. Take away something that Southern circles so far this season. Timeout, Georgia Southern. That's their second timeout of the second half. This will be a 30-second timeout. They are 5-0 when they have three or more takeaways. Yeah. 
I mean, they got four last week. They turned the ball over quite a, quite a bit last week against Louisiana Monroe, but they got them all back by their defense. It's a very opportunistic defense by Brandon Bailey. They emphasize the turnovers. He'll tell you, you know, you, you get what you emphasize. Every day at practice, they're doing ball security, ball disruption drills, and, and it, it has paid off for this defense this year. You know, what's interesting about that decision for Granger to throw the football, you go back to last week for Georgia State, kind of a similar decision by Sean Elliott uh, right before half against Louisiana. They're up 20 to nothing. He decides to throw it instead of just run the clock out, and it leads to a strip sack. And Louisiana scores right before the half, and it ended up being a huge momentum shift in the game. Louisiana got back in the game, and he told us this week that was on him. And, you know, you, you look at this play right here, you're down 24 to 7. You know, do you just run the clock out, get to halftime, try to make adjustments? Instead, they decide to drop back and throw it again. Second and 15. Brent firing a laser over the middle of the field, and J.J. McAfee comes up with it. Uh, I don't know if this is open by title, because you've got two to white, two to three white Georgia State defenders all over McAfee, but it, it, it's an example of how a great throw beats great coverage most of the time. Third and one. Jalen White is their guy. First down. So the clock will stop briefly, just enough for them to move the chains. And they're going to try to get up and spike it to preserve that last timeout. With 22 seconds left until the half. If I'm, if I'm Davis Brin here, I'm thinking, how can I at least you know, a, a get, kicking a field goal here is not a loss. I know earlier in the game we were talking about against this great red zone defense how the coach Helton told us field goals doesn't feel like a win against this defense, but throw that out the window because you got a big lead right here and an opportunity to increase it even more. Maybe take a shot here, but you want to at least give your kicker a chance. Pass incomplete going Caleb Hood's way. Shamar McCollum got some pressure on Davis Brent. Here's the pressure. Chad Staggs not sitting back, deciding to bring it and heat up, trying to get a sack and maybe knock them out of field goal range. I mean, look at Michael Lance's field goal range. He's four for seven on the year from 40 plus and 0 for one from 50 plus. So right on the edge of, of kind of where his range is. Yeah, he hit his career long this season, which was 48 yards. Third down here. Southern three for eight on third down. Got it to Hood. Turning up field. Still needs at least a yard, maybe two. Two more yards to get the first down. Stopped by Ronald Cooper. Timeout. Jordan Southern. This is their final timeout. really good job by Caleb Hood right here at the top three, of the route. Three, three working back to his five. quarterback. Zero, three, it wasn't originally three, open, really covered. Bryn kind of hung on that back foot, gave his receiver a chance to keep working to him, and it's a nice example there of how when you're originally not open as a receiver, keep working back to your quarterback. Don't come out of your route and just chill and stand there. He keeps working back downhill to his quarterback, and it got him a little bit of extra separation. So three seconds on the clock. It's fourth and one. Uh, are you... Are you asking me if they should go for it? <laughs> I'm kicking there's, the field goal here, no yeah, question. There's only three seconds on the clock. I don't think they have time to go for no, it. No, no. Kick the field goal. Yeah, I don't care what I don't out. care what the analytics say. <laughs> this will be a 34-yard attempt. A 
it's up and it's good. Georgia Southern has 20 points. Keep in mind, Georgia State only gives up 22 points a game. Yeah, I mean, really, the difference has been the last drive, couple drives in the second half. They pinned Georgia State down on a great punt. We're able to use the field position that resulted in a conversion on a fourth down for a touchdown. And then the costly mistake by Granger on the interception that leads to a field goal right before half. A lot of the momentum shift right there in the middle of the second quarter to late second quarter for Georgia Southern. I was going to ask you, on that drive where they converted twice on fourth down in the red zone, did you feel it shift? Oh, yeah, you could feel it. I mean, inside the stadium, that fourth down, you felt like everybody, that the pressure to, to convert that on fourth down. But uh, give credit to Georgia Southern. Coach Helton told us this week they were going to be aggressive on fourth down. They felt like they needed touchdowns, not field goals. And so far, it's paying off for them. Well, Georgia State will get the ball to start the second half, but halftime here on this Peach State rivalry. Georgia Southern on top of Georgia State, 27 to 7 at the half. Road to wake off the win over Duke. And Trevor, speaking of Duke. Duke and Louisville both have one conference loss. This is to survive in advance for the conference championship game. And we don't know if Riley Leonard, the quarterback for Duke, will be able to go. Coach Prime in Colorado going to L.A. UCLA is trying to figure out who their quarterback is going to be. Two teams trying to find their place in the Pac-12. Two teams trying to find their place in the SEC. Tennessee in Lexington to take on Kentucky and Oregon State. There's runway ahead for the Beavs. But they have to watch out for Arizona in the late night game on ESPN. Your second half is coming up right after this. This halftime report is presented by the refreshing taste of Twisted Tea Hard Iced Tea. Please drink responsibly. We are ready for the start of the third quarter here in Statesboro, Georgia Southern. Coming out and overwhelming Georgia State in the first half. They're up 27 to 7. Courtney Lyle, Hudson Mason, and Taylor Davis with you. Georgia State gets the ball to start the third quarter, and they've got some work to do. This one goes back into the end zone. And moments ago, Clay Helton was with Taylor. Well, Coach, a very balanced offensive attack for you in the first half. How do you continue? Well, I tell you what, we played well in all three phases and defensively the last two drives, getting the stop backed up and then the turnover backed up, created 10 points, really has created a three separation score right now. You talked about the playmakers that they have on the offensive side of the ball, but how's your defense been so effective in containing that? They've done a great job on first and second down and got them in some third and longs, which is outside their comfort zone, and that's the key to this football game. Thanks for the time, Coach. Thank you. Georgia State is going to give the ball to Marcus Carroll, who was held pretty quiet. He's one of those playmakers that Taylor was asking Coach Helton about. Yeah, this is a guy who led the or third in the country in rushing yards with over 120 yards per game, and he was held only 20 yards in the, in the first half. That was a 19-yard pickup, and they go back to him for a three-yard pickup. What did you see from Georgia State's offense in the first half? Well, they couldn't get the run game going. This entire offense is predicated on the, on the run game of the quarterback and, and Marcus Carroll. And, you know, Granger and Carroll combined only had 44 rushing yards in the first half. Granger tosses it over for the first down to Kadarius Thompson. That'll move the chains. And here's the quarterback comparison. Davis Bren and Darren Granger. And Bren looks so composed and comfortable. Yeah, and I, and I think Clay Hell would be the first thing to tell you that that bottom number zero in the interception category is the thing that he loves to see the most, especially with uh, how many turnovers and interceptions that he had coming into to this game. Yeah. 11 interceptions on the season. Georgia State only got in the red zone once. And a pass incomplete intended for Robert Lewis, who was targeted several times in the first half. Already has six catches in this game. You see Georgia State's total offense, 157 yards in the first half, compared to 292 for Southern. Granger pulls it, has room. He's a yard short of the first down. Inside the 35, he goes stuffed by T.J. Smith. Well, Brandon Bailey draws what you call the perfect stunt off. He squeezes the defensive lineman, the linebacker. Watch this linebacker for George Sutton. 13 squeezes the linebacker. Nine is right there to make the play. Great call. You just got to tackle the quarterback. 
flags come out. Avery Reese, the center, was pushed back. Off five, defense with contact. That's a five yard penalty, results in a first down. That was the Trell Bullard, number 57. I think this defensive line and the game plan coming in was in the run game to do some things like we saw in that last play to kind of manipulate the read for Darren Granger. And defensive coordinator Brandon Bailey has done some really good job with some movements on his defensive line, changing up the pitcher in the run game for Granger, and it's giving him fits. He will hand it off as, as he should to Marcus Carroll, bursting through the hole inside the five. His two best runs have been on this drive. Yeah, I mean, look how wide open this hole is. You get great push up front. And Titan Ferris, the center, just washes that nose guard out. And when Carroll has this big of a hole to run through, good luck. I mean, because you're, you're not stopping him. That's a 24-yard run, his longest of the night. Dancing around. No gain on the play as the handoff goes again to Marcus Carroll. And just the second time today in this game that Georgia State has even been in the red zone. And only one for one in the first half and really in, the, in nowhere even near the red zone in the second quarter. You already see a different life, a different energy in this offense coming out of halftime. Georgia Southern subbing, running a guy off the field. Williams in motion. Granger has no time to make a decision. Isaac Walker got there first. Well, Isaac Walker working off the left side of that offensive line. Number 13 right there for Georgia Southern coming off the edge on Travis Glover, the fifth year senior left tackle. And this time the redshirt sophomore from Greensboro, North Carolina gets the best of them. And this is where Georgia State, and one of the reasons they've thrived is because they've been third and goal and third and short. That sack is huge. And a third and 14, not what they had in mind. Tyleek Williams. No gain. Mark Stampley, who already has an interception in this game on the tackle. Yeah, just a tunnel screen to Williams, who is their dynamic playmaker. He has great speed, but Georgia Southern, you see great eyes by some of the linebackers and the safeties for Georgia Southern. They're playing zone. Eyes are in the right place to rally to make the tackle. But I go back to that play before in the sack by Isaac Walker. This is the first career field goal attempt for Isaac Kone, 32 yards. And he missed it. Wow, well, State looked like they were moving well out of the locker room, and Southern shut it down. Yeah, a couple plays, and you blink, and they're inside the red zone. Isaac Walker comes up with the big sack, pushes him to third and goal from a long way out. They get the stop. They force a field goal, and they miss it. Big time stop by this Georgia Southern defense to open up the second half. Georgia State gets into the red zone for just the second time tonight, but they come away with no points after a missed 32-yard field goal attempt from Isaac Kone. And Southern keeps that momentum they built in the second quarter. Kone misses here his first career field goal attempt, and here's Sean Elliott's reaction. Interesting, we talked to Coach Elliott about the kicking situation because he made a change after a missed PAT on their first touchdown on Saturday to Kone. This pass is dropped by Burgess. And he told us every Tuesday the specialists compete, and this week it was Isaac Kone winning the job. Yeah, it's truly a week-by-week -week competition for Coach Sean Elliott, and he felt like Isaac Kone was uh, worthy of, of kicking it and uh, worthy of winning that job this week. Liam Rickman has had some inconsistencies and he turned to the freshman there and, you know, deflating to say the least when you drive the field as easily as Georgia State did on the first drive there and get down there and come away with no points. Third down here for Southern. Brennan to Dalen Cobb. Room to run. Recognizes the pressure. He's got a free defender in his face. 
goes hot, knows who his receiver is, and beats the blitz by throwing straight into it. And offensive coordinator Brian Ellis told us this week they've emphasized trying to get more explosive plays in the passing game specifically of 20 yards or more. And I think that one will do just fine. Dalen Cobb out of Washington, Georgia. He was a dual threat quarterback in high school, showing off his legs. He had to do everything he could to stay on his feet. Yeah, starts with your quarterback identifying the pressure package. He knows he's hot. Gets it to the playmaker, Cobb, it's hooded space for a big time touchdown. Kick off your week eight NFL Sunday at 10 a.m. Eastern with the Countdown Crew on ESPN and the ESPN app. They'll have all the early breaking stories, injury updates, and previews of each game right up to kick off. Wow, look at the score that we have here for you. Dalen Cobb just added to it with a 76-yard touchdown run. We talked about the matchup on third down and the emphasis of it coming in. There you got a third down. Your quarterback identifies that Chad Staggs is bringing all-out pressure. Cover zero, middle of the field, wide open. Got a guy in his face. Just great job of Davis Brent seeing the coverage and knowing where his hot receiver is. Well, that's a career-long reception for Dalen Cobb on a touchdown. That's his first career touchdown. You set the bar high there, buddy. Yeah, he did, didn't he? <laughs> How about Brent averaging 16 yards per completion tonight? There was a huge emphasis on becoming more explosive in the passing game this week at practice. They talked a lot about, hey, we got to find ways to generate pass plays of 20 yards or more. And they are well on their way. I think they're going to be pretty content when they look at the end of the night, watch the tape with as many explosive plays as they've had in the passing game. Absolutely. Brian Ellis, their offensive coordinator, told us they would love six to seven play drives. On the move is Darren Granger. He hasn't been able to use his legs a lot tonight. No, his, his legs have really been a non-factor. In fact, I'm, I'm kind of surprised that we haven't seen more of these design quarterback runs. This is what makes him and this offense so hard to stop. But you got to credit Georgia Southern. They've done some things with loading the box, getting the safety in there, as well as their defensive front to kind of mitigate his legs. There he goes again. Tripped up as he reaches the 50. And two, coming into this game, we were talking Darren Granger and Marcus Carroll in the running for the Sun Belt Player of the Year. Yeah, both of them. And, and really because of what they've been able to do on the ground. That has been a non factor tonight. Carroll's got a hole and he's got some speed. Cutting back inside, falls around the 25 yard line. That's where he met Tyrell Davis. What's well, ironic right now, Georgia Southern kind of playing this soft prevent defense. They don't want to give any big plays up in the passing game, but they're giving it up. That structure they're playing is giving up the big runs in the run game. Yeah, that's a 26 yard pickup to the air to Robert Lewis. Still needs two yards for the first down. Well, for the second straight possession, Georgia State has very easily just moved down the field into the red zone. But has that problems capitalizing once they get here? Got here on the last drive. They missed a 32-yard field goal. Just the third time today they've been in the red zone. Ranger scampering and no gain on the play. Justin Rhodes dropped him, who's wearing the honorary number zero tonight. He's usually 88, but he has put the team first this week and earned that number zero, which is so special to the Georgia Southern program. Third and three. Georgia State two for seven on third down tonight. They have not had a lot of success, and mainly because they haven't been in this down and distance. It's been a lot of third and five plus. They love to use the quarterback design run in these situations. They're going to have to call timeout. Sean Elliott sprinted down the sideline to get that timeout as the play this clock the first was winding down. The second half. This will be a 30 second timeout. Georgia State, the third down team that
came into this game first in the Sun Belt, eighth in the nation, converting 51% of the time on third down. What's been different tonight with this Georgia Southern defense they've been facing? Well, I, they haven't got, allowed them to get the run going. If you look at the tape and study Georgia State, they're a great third down offensive team because it's a lot of third and three or less. And tonight it's been the exact opposite. It's been a lot of third and five plus. And so in a situation like this in third and three, I think this is no doubt two down territory. I mean, with the score in the second half, uh, you probably at this point don't have a lot of confidence in your kicking game. And so I, I think this is two down territory. You see the difference on the season average, 51, 52 yards, excuse me, 52% conversion compared to two for seven tonight. Third and three here. Carroll motions out. And a flag, Georgia State jumped. Ball start, 52, offense, five yard penalty, still third down. And that's Travis Glover, one of their most experienced offensive linemen. Yeah, fifth year senior at that left tackle position. You're talking about a guy that's got over 50 college starts and has played a lot of football. You push your quarterback back to what we just talked about, a, a very long, now that third and three where everything's open in the run game in the playbook, now you got to think about having to throw the ball here. Well, Robert Lewis, who has the most catches tonight with seven, is at the top of your screen by himself. Marcus Carroll, first down and more to the 10. Well, there's a Georgia Southern linebacker, Terion Lee Jr., number seven. Watch this, right there, right there to, to make the tackle. And uh, Carroll makes a miss. There's been a couple times tonight where that unblocked defender for Georgia Southern has had a chance to make the play and can't do it. Back to Carroll, who has gone over 100 yards here in the second half. That's now six games this season with 100 and more rushing yards for Marcus Carroll. It's got to be so frustrating as a linebacker to read it right, react the right way, to, to fit it perfectly, and, and then you get to the play and you, you just can't, can't wrap up, can't make the tackle. But part of it as well is the athleticism of Marcus Carroll. You know, that guy's on scholarship too for a reason. Granger throwing, rolling. Hits Robert Lewis on the move, who makes the grab at the one. His eighth catch tonight. They use the motion to their advantage, right? They're going to motion Lewis, and you see those two receivers for Georgia State. They just press vertical. They just run and kind of get in the way, and when they're playing man coverage, that DB who's guarding Lewis has to fight through all that traffic, and that can be just so hard to do. Absolutely the right decision. Looking up top to the corner of the end zone. And the pass is caught by Kadarius Thompson. Seth Robertson in coverage, and Thompson went up and got the football his first touchdown of the season. Now Seth Robertson's right there. I mean, he's right there to make the play. He just missed kind of times his watch. He jumps a little too early. I mean, if you're Seth Robertson, you got to be just kicking yourself. You played it nicely. You played the right technique. Your eyes are even tracking the ball, and then you just timed it wrong and wasn't able to make the play. Liam Rickman on for the PAT. It's up and good. 
And so Darren Granger has his 11th touchdown pass of the season, throwing one up for Kadarius Thompson. Georgia State trying to climb back in this one. Scores on fourth and goal. The touchdown pass from Darren Granger to Kadarius Thompson as they try to climb back into this one. The last two drives, 20 plays, 136 yards, only seven points. Georgia Southern has done a good job of slowing them down. And Southern's going to start just inside the 30. Well, coming into the season, Sean Elliott, their head coach, knew that he needed some help with the culture. So he brought in Mike Siriano as a new strength coach. Sean Elliott told us, look, I'm a hammer. I needed a second hammer to reset the culture of this program. And you hear the mantra a lot now that Mike Siriano has brought in. So what, now what? And are we possibly seeing that mentality from Georgia State down here in the second half? Yeah, I mean, the last two drives, you've seen them Kind of flush some of the bad stuff in the first half. They moved the ball very easily uh, and effortlessly. And then finally kind of capped it off this time with a touchdown. And, uh, you know, I, I, I know Coach Sirianni has, has brought a toughness and, and really they needed an enforcer. The thing I love about him, he's, he's also an assistant coach, watches tapes, sits in meetings. Yeah, he sits in film with the coaches. This one goes to Jalen White. Still rolling around, and that's enough for a first down. Let's go, Let's go, we go. Jalen White has had himself a really nice night. It's been uh, kind of a calm night problem, but 13 attempts for 82 yards, averaging well over six yards a pop. I mean, this is a guy that coming in, they wanted to get him about 25 to 29 touches in the game, and that's a, it's a little lower than what they wanted to get him, but he's been very productive when he's had the ball in his hands. Burgess is the man in motion back to White, and it's a loss of one on the play. I think the challenge when you're up and you've got this lead and you still got a quarter to quarter and a half plan from an offensive standpoint is the natural tendency is to just kind of watch the clock, right, and try to burn the clock. And as an offensive coordinator, you, you got to kind of call plays uh, in a way that, that got you here, aggressive, don't be afraid to still air it out with that same mentality and the same aggressiveness from an offensive standpoint. And the Georgia Southern's offense has already gone over their season passing yards per game. Intercepted. Davis Brin is picked off by Jeremiah Johnson. His first interception of the season, and is Georgia State slowly creeping back into this game? Yeah, we just talked about, hey, remain aggressive, but that doesn't mean be reckless. I I'm not for sure where Brent is throwing this football. He he's clearly targeting Marcus Sanders Jr., but that's not open. And Jeremiah Johnson, uh, that's got to be the easiest interception that he's had in a really long time. That is, that's the big mistake that we all thought about coming in with Davis Brent. He played great in the first half, didn't put the ball in harm's way. That's the type of opportunity that Georgia State needs to get back in this ball game. It's the 12th interception thrown this season by Davis Brent. Granger will keep it to the 34-yard line. That's stopped by Mark Stanley. Now, it, it, it's really the, the type of momentum shift that you see all the time in college football with big leads. It takes one mistake. An offense that's just kind of getting out of its shell, struggled in the first half, but now has great field position. And before you blink, they can make this a, a, a pretty close ball game. It's kind of the opposite of the story for Georgia State last week on Saturday against Louisiana. They, they played with the lead. Yeah, they were up 20. They scored 20 points in the second quarter, didn't score again. Won the football game. Option look, they pitch it out to Carroll. Around the edge, slides down at the 30. Third down coming up. Marquez, Watson, Trent on the stop. I mean, even being down 27 to seven at half, we all kind of knew that at some point this Georgia State offense is, is going to get going. It's just a matter of time. State three for nine on third down. 
Frazier lets it fly. Looking for Jakari Carter. And Mark Stampley covered it well. Well, Georgia saw their plays cover zero, meaning no safety, no help over the top. They don't even try to disguise it. Third and three, they play cover zero. Granger checks. So I'll give a hand motion. He wanted a fade route, which is the type route. Look, no safety in the middle of the field. Clear as day, it's cover zero. He takes a shot. Really nice coverage there to break up the pass. Fourth down, here they go. Gives up another deep pass towards the end zone, and it's broken up by Shamar Bartholomew. Looking for Robert Lewis, and they are stopped on fourth down. Yeah, another time. So back-to-back -back plays. Georgia Southern plays man coverage. Brandon Bailey says, I'm going to put faith in my corners. Last time, it was Mark Stampley who comes up with the big PBU, and this time, it's Shamar Bartholomew. Living and dying by the blitz and having faith in your corners to hold up in one-on-one -on -one situations. Man, the job that Brandon Bailey has done with this Georgia Southern defense. Coach Helton told us, the good Lord was with me when I was finding a new defensive coordinator. Yeah, they came from Buffalo. They actually got to go up against him in the bowl game. Georgia Southern did. Burgess has the catch, spinning his way to a first down and still going. You, know, you get to see a guy defensively in a bowl game, and you never think that, hey, maybe in a couple weeks he's going to actually be not the guy that you're going up against anymore. He's going to be on, on your side in your defense coordinator. That's what happened with Brandon Bailey. He was coaching at Buffalo. Georgia Southern played Buffalo. And, and I loved what Clay Helton told us. He goes, man, going up against them was miserable. And that's how I knew I wanted him to be my defense coordinator. He gets to come back home where he went to school and coach for his alma mater. Jalen White picks up two, and Coach Bailey told us when he got the call, he is a Georgia Southern grad, and his wife, too. He said, I would have got on a bike and rode it down here backwards to take the job. Yeah, it was, it was a week before spring ball even started, so at that point, a lot of the coaching staff across the country is in place, but you know, co coordinators talk about all the time, oh, I'm going to play zero. Oh, I'm when I get on Saturday, I'm going to play zero. Not a lot of them, you know, put their mouth, put the action, put it into action, but back-to-back -back plays there. He puts his corner on an island, and then they make them look good. Second and eight here for Southern's offense, and Davis Brand who threw an interception on their last drive, and the ball comes out again. Georgia State falls on it. Back-to-back -back turnovers by Southern. Corey Warren. Anthony Bloom got pressure on Bren, and Corey Warren was there to fall on the football, the transfer from Coastal Carolina. Now Bloom gets the assist, but, but Warren gets the recovery. I, this is just can't happen. It, this can't happen from your quarterback. Y you have to live to play another day. He played really good in the first half, and now all of a sudden, the past two drives, he's made some boneheaded decisions, and it just, that can't happen from a quarterback position. Sometimes it's okay to take a sack and punt. Play the field position game. And that is, that's not playing the quarterback position the right way when you've got the lead. Marcus Carroll's had a lot of success here in the second half. He takes it to the 32-yard line. 42 seconds on the clock here in the third quarter. You see Georgia State's last three drives. We'll get back to that in just a second as they complete the pass to Robert Lewis for the first down. Coach Elliott is dying for them to push him tempo, but you see the last three drives. They've been down there. They've moved the ball in this Georgia Southern defense. They just haven't resulted in points. Here they go again. Carroll to the 19. I think part of that is Sean Elliott just doesn't have a lot of faith in his kicking game right now. He's kind of gone back and forth between two kickers. Carroll untouched through the line into the end zone. Touchdown, Marcus Carroll. 
We saw Sean Elliott so animated on the sideline. He was screaming for his quarterback to go, 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 push tempos. Defense is tired. They've been on the field a lot. They just had a sudden change. They're back out on the field again. And this tempo, I mean, look at this George Southern defense. They're, they're gassed. They're absolutely gassed. They've been on the field quite a bit here in the third quarter. And you see when you can use tempo to your advantage, you can gas a defense. Liam Rickman with the PAT. Up and good, and that is how they cap the third quarter. Georgia State not getting on the bus and driving back to Atlanta just yet. One more quarter of football in this rivalry battle. Georgia Southern being pushed by Georgia State here late. Every face, Sam, this is Antoine powell Ryland. Four first half sacks that continue to get pressure on the quarterback. That one equal to safe. 32 to 10, and the Hokies are driving again right now on ESPN. Courtney. Man, drama is building in Statesboro. Courtney Lyle, Hudson Mason, and Taylor Davis with you. Georgia Southern dominated the first half, and Georgia State making a push in the third quarter. Moments ago, Georgia State head coach Sean Elliott spoke with Taylor. Fourth quarter underway here in Statesboro. Coach Elliott joins me now. We saw the fight of your team in that third quarter. How can they win the fourth? Well, we got to continue doing what we did the last half of that third quarter. You know, we came out, we took the opening drive right there and made a blunder on a field goal attempt. Then we made a bad call defensively and gave up a dog on long touchdown pass so with zero pressure. We got to keep playing and we got to play one, one, just one play at a time. And listen, we got 15 minutes of football. Play the best 15 minutes of football we can. They believe in one another, and we're going to go out here and push. Have no idea how this is going to end, but we're going to fight for the last 15 minutes. Thanks so much. Thank you. Georgia State has definitely adopted the personality of their head coach, Sean Elliott. But let's go to Southern here. The last two drives, Davis Brent has turned the football over. Yeah, touch, or excuse me, an interception and then a stripped fumble. And you know, it, it makes you wonder how much faith right now does this offensive staff and play caller Brian Ellis have with this lead to call drop back pass and put the ball in the right arm of Davis Brent. He came in with 11 interceptions. Turnovers have been a huge problem for last week for this offense. and. It started to kind of rear its ugly head here in the second half again. Well, they're going to let Bren drop back and throw the football looking for Burgess. Did he get underneath it to make the catch? Yes. First down to the 41. And yeah, Georgia Southern is going to want to push tempo here to make sure that they can't take a second look at this because the Georgia State coaches on that sideline were saying it was incomplete. Yeah, it looks like he got his arms under it. They get the snap off in time. Jalen White falling forward for a pickup of two. Yeah, this is, is this is an interesting position to be as a quarterback, a former quarterback myself, right? Like when, when things are in rhythm and things are going well, you, there's this flow of playing the position where you don't really think much. You take your drop and you let it rip. And then all of a sudden, Two turnovers in a row, you, you kind of feel yourself getting tight a little bit. You're thinking, and you start to play like, hey, playing not to make a mistake instead of playing to make a play. Brent pulls it and runs to the 45-yard line. They have been very clear that Davis Brent is their guy. They've said it numerous times. We've said it. He's the reason they control their own destiny right now. This is such an important game in the Sun Belt East, and they're one win away from bowl eligibility. Well, there's nothing wrong with plays like this right now with the lead and the clock in the fourth quarter. Ball security is everything, and sometimes punting is all right. You know, with a lead like this, too, on a down and distance, third and five here. Let's see what Georgia State does. You know, they, they brought zero last time, and Georgia Southern beat them in it. My gut is, is they're not going to go cover zero again. They're going to back out and play coverage. Brent over the top complete to Caleb Hood right at the marker. First down. Really smart, headsy play by Caleb Hood, the fifth-year senior, to know where the sticks are. Third and five, he goes six yards 
And that ends up being enough for the first down. That's a guy in Caleb Hood that can create for himself. Brian Ellis told us he doesn't worry too Lord much the about. Field was a first down. The previous play is under further review. Going to check the spot on this. I think Sean Elliott and his staff over there felt like they gave him a pretty generous spot. Well, the official on that side was holding up his fist, signaling fourth down. See where the spot goes again. They gave him the first down on the field. The first down marker is at the 49 yard line. He catches it right at the 50. You know, and it's where the ball is. Yeah, that's that is super close. Yeah. It is right there. And again, the call on the field first down. So they have to have enough evidence that's indisputable to overturn this call. All right there, knee down. Hard to tell though from that angle where the 49 yard line is. This is, you know, there's the 50. His knee is down right in front of the 50. 49 yard line is the first down marker. I, mean, I, I think that's a first down. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. First down. So Paul stands and they do get the first down. You know, another reason they like Davis Brin is uh, Brian Ellis was telling him, telling us he gives the team hope. Hope that in any situation, you could go on out on the field and get the job done. Yeah, great quarterbacks provide hope. That's what Davis Brin brings to this team. In a situation like this, we're going to have to continue to make plays with your legs and your arms. White. Forcing his way to the 44-yard line, a pickup of five. And the clock ticks. Another thing about Davis Brin, guys, coaches were saying he's a true student of the game with all the options that we have open to him every play. He has to be, right? I've watched him over here on the sideline. He's on the phone constantly, especially after those picks. He's going to benefit here from a P.I. call. Bright Keese Brown, who's making his return. Yeah, this is going to be a pretty easy one for that side official. Bright Keese Brown just gets his hand out on the jersey of the receiver and yanks it and pulls it. Pass interference, defense, number five. That's a 15-yard penalty and an automatic first down. This is a good job of Davis Brand of giving his receiver a chance to make a play. It's, a, it's an underthrown back shoulder ball on purpose to Marcus Sanders Jr. And it's a great job of Sanders kind of reading and reacting. And when that receiver and that DB especially is running full speed like that, that ball then gets thrown on that back outside shoulder. And that could be so hard to defend as a DB. Puts the ball at the 29. Caleb Hood has the catch. Making moves to the 21-yard line. Still needs two for the first down. Uh, I love what type of plays Brian Ellis is calling right now for his quarterback and his offense. Screens, which are high completion percentage. They're not risky type throws. He's kind of incorporating the ground game, getting Jalen White's legs involved. Georgia State, again, top 10 in the nation in red zone defense. Off the fingertips of Derwin Burgess. Gavin Pringle with a nice coverage. Yeah, going after Pringle in man-to-man -man coverage, and I thought Burgess had this. Bren kind of drops it right in the bucket with great touch. You see Burgess trying to hold that line. That ball gets thrown on the outside shoulder away from the DB. 
Bird just can't quite bring it in. Third and two from the 21. Bryn pulling it. Georgia State gets the stop. Justin Abraham and Jeremiah Johnson. You see Javon Dennis, his helmet coming off. Excuse me, Johnson's helmet coming off. I thought Brent, this is quarterback kind of move left. Quarterback, lead, your, your tailback is your lead blocker. And there's two white jerseys there, one for the running back to block and the other for the, the account for the quarterback. White, Jalen White doesn't block either of them. I don't know if he thought he was supposed to have the ball or what, but a missed opportunity there on what I thought was a pretty good chance to convert. So this will be a 40-yard field goal attempt for Michael Lance. He got it. Georgia Southern extending its lead by three here, under 10 minutes to play. ESPN Plus is the home of more than 50 Sunbelt football games, including these on Saturday. South Alabama hosts Louisiana at 5 Eastern and Texas State taking on Troy at 7. If you're a Sunbelt fan, fan you got to get ESPNplus.com to sign up. The Sunbelt is no, no joke. Oh, it is deep, isn't it? I mean, especially with the addition of James Madison and teams like Marshall. And boy, it is as deep as it's ever been. A high level talent in this conference, too. And this is such an important game that we have here in Statesboro when it comes to the Sunbelt East standings. James Madison is not eligible for the conference championship game because it's their second year transitioning to FBS. So you see where Georgia State and Georgia Southern sit right sit right now. A win for Southern would be huge. Yeah, it would. It would keep them absolutely in the race and really propel them up to be tied for, for second uh, with Old Dominion, who they haven't played yet. But, you know, essentially, if you're tied for second, you're really tied for first because right. James Madison can't play. They're transitioning from FCS to FBS, so they're ineligible to play in, in their conference championship and a bowl game. Darren Granger, he was looking at Tyleek Williams, but the pass batted down Isaiah Walker. Tip passes have been a common theme tonight for this Georgia Southern defensive line. And these guys have, have really disrupted the passing rhythm by just getting their hands up. The fourth tip, the fourth tip pass of the night for this front four of Georgia Southern. Back to Marcus Carroll, who has been so good in this second half. A bit quiet in the first half for State. Picks up two there, but has had a couple of explosive plays here. He's got 149, now 151 yards on the ground. A lot of those have come in the second half. Yeah, 120 of them. 20 yards. And this Georgia Southern defense has been on the field more in the second half because of the, the, the turnovers by the offense. Third and eight. Georgia Southern called a timeout before the snap. Timeout, Georgia Southern. That's their first timeout of the second half. This will be a 30-second timeout. We'll take it with them, 9.18 to go. All right, college football playoff rankings, Tuesday, October 31st. We'll have the college football top 25 show presented by Allstate. But we get ready for the lease release. Uh, Hudson, give us your, uh, your here they are. Your yeah, this is my record. prediction for the first four teams and the first two out. Georgia, Michigan, Oklahoma. Uh, really love the way Dylan Gabriel's playing. And with Quinn Ewers out at Texas for an undisclosed amount of time, who knows if Texas will be able to threaten them again. And then Washington has the best offense with the best quarterback in the country. So we will find out in just a few days. Carroll. That's the third or fourth explosive run of this half for Marcus Carroll. Yep, and they're all coming in five and six man boxes. Georgia Southern deciding to kind of stay in too high safety. They don't want to give up the big pass, but they're getting gashed with the run. They sling it out to Jakari Carter in the flat. Let's check in with Taylor. God, it is so evident down here field level, guys, just the power that Marcus Carroll runs with. I actually spoke with his high school coach today, and he said, that's what I've tried to instill in him, that that's his style. Don't slow down, don't juke, run through people. 
Yeah, she's talking about Andrew Ramsey, who was high school running back coach that Marcus Carroll still works with in the past, is picked off! Marquez Watson Trent! All the way into the end zone! 47 yards for the second pick of the night by Southern's defense! Well, Darren Granger throws this ball late into the flat, which is the cardinal sin for all quarterbacks. If you're going to throw that ball in the flat, it's got to be done early in your drop. See, he checks, and then comes back to it, and then throws it late. And Marquez Watson, Trent is standing right there, gets a great lead block by his teammate for a pick six. His second interception of the season. Coaching staff told us Marquez Watson, Trent, look, he's undersized, but extremely productive. He has an elite football IQ. His preparation is elite, and he was ready on that play. He was at the right place at the right time, covering the running back out of the flat. And really the first big mistake of the night from Darren Granger, staring down his running back, throws it late to the flat, and a big time pick six from Marquez Watson, Trent. Georgia Southern, the third straight home game with a pick six. Marquez Watson Trent puts Georgia Southern up 44 to 21 over in state rival Georgia State, who has won the last three meetings against Southern. Well, next week, the NFC North leading Lions host the Raiders in a Monday Night Football game from Detroit for the first time since 2018, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ABC, ESPN, and ESPN Deportes. Turnovers are so critical to Georgia Southern's success. Yeah, Batman's not afraid to make the opponents cry. <laughs> Two picks tonight for Southern's defense. Marcus Carroll's got no quit in him, though. To the 38, and that's a first down. Marcus Carroll's going to, he's on pace to have himself a career night. Uh, he might end up with 200 yards rushing tonight, 24 attempts on 173 yards and two touchdowns. And his career high is 184 yards set by Rhode Island in the opener. He might break that on the next run. Yeah. There he goes again, past midfield to the 49 in Southern Territory. And 186, he's two yards over now, a new career high for Marcus Carroll. Most of that coming here in the second half. Granger lets it fly. Oh, through the hands of T.J. Smith, he was looking for Robert Lewis. And Robert Lewis gets behind the corner, and T.J. Smith kind of gets caught peeking in the middle of the field. And I didn't think he was going to be able to get off the hash in time. He covers ground well, gets over there, and gets his hand on the ball. He's kind of flirting with giving up a touchdown, though. Letting that receiver behind him. Jakari Carter. First down state. Yeah, I think at this point, you're content defensively for Georgia Southern, giving up the, the five-yard plays, the eight-yard plays, even the ten-yard plays. You just don't want to get beat over the top and allow Georgia State to, to score quickly. And Southern is going to call a timeout before that ball was snapped. Part of the snap, timeout, Georgia Southern. That's their second timeout of the second half. This will be a 30-second timeout. You know, Clay Helton in his second season got a taste of what this rivalry was like last year and saw how much it means to the guys on his roster. Yeah, the guys from Georgia, but everybody on the roster. It's yeah. a big deal to play Georgia State, and they had lost this game the last three times facing the Panthers. It's still a new rivalry, yeah. you know, um, but I think Clay Held would be the first to tell you that he got kind of baptized into yeah. it last year, right? And he's a guy from the Southeast, uh, and he knows how much football means at this part of the country, and, and I thought what stuck out to me 
this week talking to him was he is so happy to be at a place that gives you a chance to win. From an administration standpoint, from a recruiting standpoint, he knows he can win and win big here. And um, it was cool to talk to him about the difference between being in Southern California to, to Statesboro and uh, the lifestyle change. He said, the biggest difference, I can get to work now in two country songs and a cup of coffee. Yeah, <laughs> that is a big difference. And the Southern from USC. Granger scrambling. First down, weaving his way through to the 15. Come on, dude, come on, dude. Good quarterback design run. They give so many options to Granger at the line of scrimmage. He reads two high safeties. He gets into his own quarterback run and gashes the defense for a big play. Carroll, a loss of yar a yard on the play. Isaac Walker got to him. Well, this is where if you're Georgia State, you got to be thinking about six and a half minutes left, down multiple scores. You got to be thinking about really going fast. You can't be letting this play clock bleed. You know, you need another two to three possessions minimum. They're taking a lot of time. A lot of time. The snap was dropped and scooped up by Granger. Got to get the throw off anyway into the end zone to Robert Lewis for a 15-yard strike. Well, it all starts with the protection. Granger has enough time. If you watch his eyes, he starts on the left side of the field, right? Watch his eyes right here. They start on the left, doesn't like it, works all the way back across the field and finds the redshirt junior, Robert Lewis, for a touchdown. They're staying on the field. Looks like they're going for two. Lewis was in motion. Granger rolling his way. Did not get it. To Mount Hickman, who State has tried to test all night, makes the tackle. I thought Robert Lewis was open really at the very beginning of the route. You'll see this here. Granger's just a little bit late getting the ball to him, and that's the difference. And Lewis walking in for a two-point conversion. That ball needs to be out right now. It's a little bit late, and it allows the Georgia Southern DB Hickman to make a play. Back here at Statesboro. We were wondering if Georgia State would onside kick this. They don't. They'll boot it into the end zone. Well, ABC College Football triple header for you on Saturday. Florida State and Wake Forest at noon. Texas hosting BYU. We'll cap the day with Colorado and UCLA. That's coming up on ABC on Saturday. All right, we were talking about in the break the decision to go for two. Yeah. What do you uh, think? Uh, I didn't agree with it, and I was sitting there kind of doing the math in my head, and I'm going, well, if you just kick the field goal, it's a 16-point game. Right. And that's a two, you know, you get two touchdowns and two extra points. Kick the PAT, kick yeah. The PAT, and it's a two-score game. Instead, you go for two, you don't get it. Now it's a three-score game. Switch 6-12 to go. Georgia State does have two timeouts, and Southern will go to the ground game. No surprise as they try to eat up this clock. I don't know if that's a representation of the lack of faith that, that Coach Elliott has in his kicking game right now. We know he's been going back and forth and between his kickers and you know, his freshman, Isaac Kone, missed a chip shot earlier, went back to Liam Rickman. So, but I, I, it's, it's still only an extra point. You should have somebody on the roster that can make an extra point. So Georgia State will use its second timeout. They'll have one remaining, 6.07 on the clock. Georgia Southern came out and looked composed in that first half. First half alone, 292 yards of total offense. They're at 430 now. Davis Brent had a couple of turnovers, but that was here in the second half. 
interception and then was hit and fumbled. Yeah, it's, it's funny, if you, if you would have told Coach Elliott in the fourth quarter with five minutes to go, that Marcus Carroll would have 198 rushing yards, two touchdowns. Darren Granger would throw for another buck 50 and two touchdowns. <laughs> you know, he'd probably tell you you were crazy that he was down 17. Problem is, Granger's thrown two interceptions. One was a pick six. Bren on the move and throws it away. I think they wanted a late hit. And most importantly, it stops the clock. And here's the end of the play right here. Bryn gets flushed out of the pocket. And and I'm a former quarterback myself, and I would say that that was a good no call. You know? Wow. Yeah, I think that's a good wow. no call. He, he tried to hold him up. I thought you'd go the other way. Brent stepping up in the pocket, but the pass incomplete at the feet of Derwin Burgess. Yeah, Chris no. Davis getting in his face. Back-to-back -back plays, most importantly, Georgia State's getting off the field thinking we really have to burn as many timeouts as we wanted to, and the clock stops. So, some interesting decisions there by Georgia Southern offensively. Alex Smith on to punt Jakari Carter. Back to receive. State will have one timeout. Just under six minutes to go. First punt of the half for Georgia Southern. For either team. Now a short punt. That's exactly what, hey, Georgia State will take that. Yeah. And now Georgia State's going to get great field position. And if we've seen anything, Courtney, in the second half, the ability to score in the blink of an eye is Georgia State. I mean, they've gotten down the field very quickly on the past couple drives, especially in the run game. And, and I'm assuming that Georgia Southern is going to continue to kind of play this, you know, soft zone coverage where they're keeping two CHDs deep. They're not really worried about the run game. They just don't want to get beat over the top. And that really has landed. I mean, look at the box count right now for Georgia Southern. They only got five guys in the box with Georgia State who can run with six with the quarterback. Yeah, no doubt they'll give it to Marcus Carroll, starting at the 43-yard line already in Southern Territory to the 34. Nine-yard pickup. Carroll. Hard hit by Prince Green. Really nice job of the defensive end there, kind of blitzing the quarterback, running back exchange right here. This defensive end for Georgia Southern forces the handoff, and then Green makes a nice tackle. Darren Granger looking for Ty Lee Williams, incomplete, and there's Prince Green again. Yeah, Green this time, but the play before, he was down at the line of scrimmage, acting like more of a linebacker. This time, he's in the middle of the field, reading Granger's eyes. And Williams is wide open. Ball hangs just a little too long, and it allows for Green to get over there and deliver a big blow. So Freddie Brock has come in in the backfield with Darren Granger. Brock one carry in this game, his second appearance of the season. Tucks it. Ball comes out. Ball still loose. Southern football. That's turnover number three. And that is a key for Georgia Southern. They have not lost a game when they force three turnovers. It's a speed option to the left here, and Granger you know, goes to tuck this football, and he gets just blasted. The ball immediately comes out. I think that was Marquez Watson, Trent number one, who delivered the hit and knocked the ball out. He's the one that had the pick six earlier. Oh.
see here. Number one right there to your right. Sheds the block. Here he is. He shows up and just boom. Puts his helmet right on the football. And comes up with the third turnover of the night for this defense. Relentless. What a night for Marquez, Watson, Trent. And the big pick Georgia six State. earlier That's in the game. Now the forced fumble. Georgia State's going to use its third and final timeout. You see there, Georgia State this year has been so great in the turnover margin. Plus three coming in, which was eighth in the country. They don't give the ball up. The boy today forced turnovers, but tonight it's been a totally different story. Minus one in the turnover margin. And it's so interesting talking to these coaches now. You look at the turnover margin, and, and I would say the two biggest statistics that coaches feel like have a direct impact on the outcome of the game is in this order. Number one, explosive plays, and number two, turnovers. And that may surprise some people because you hear all the time, hey, win the turnover battle and you win the game. But when it's an e if it's two to one or even two two turnovers, it doesn't have as big of an outcome on the game as much as explosive plays do. Right. But man, when you get three turnovers in one game, defensively, you give the ball back to your offense. I think it's more impressive. This is the sixth time that Georgia Southern has done that this year. Wow. This defense has been elite. And havoc and forcing turnovers. And last week alone, Georgia Southern turned the ball over four times, but they, they get the ball back four times. Yes. I mean, not exactly how you want to live, but. Tonight they've turned it over twice and gotten it back three times. Jalen White is stopped for no game by John Trey Hunter. But the clock still moves, third and seven coming. Georgia State can't do anything about it. You, you go back and you're going to watch this tape, and I know Georgia State coaches are going to look at it and they're just going to pinpoint to the turnovers. Because, I mean, you got the run game going in the second half. Marcus Carroll had a career night, 208 yards on the ground. Darren Granger had a pretty good night. Didn't rush the ball as much as I thought. You got to credit the, the defensive game plan by Brandon Bailey, Rick Rowan, the defensive line coach. I thought the D line for Georgia Southern was great in the run game, and they had four tip passes in the pass game as well. Tough to take down. Two Georgia State defenders latched on. He moves it to the 41 for the first down. 21 attempts right there at 100 yards on the night for White. It's been kind of kind of a quiet night for him, right? I mean, they, they said they wanted to get him the ball about 29 times. He's got 22 rushes. One reception. And only one reception, but. Still, he's got his third 100-yard game of the season when it comes to rushing yards. And White taken down by Tylon Dunlap. Let's check in with Taylor. The affair down here on the Georgia Southern sideline. Coach Helton's brother, Tyson Helton, is in attendance. He's the head coach at Western Kentucky. I just went up and spoke with him. He said, hey, the schedule worked out really well this week. Their game was on Tuesday, and brother's coaching in a game on Thursday. So he got to come and uh, watch and support brother. He said, look, I'm happy to be here when it's a win. He's going to be happy post-game, and uh, I'm happy to cheer him on. A really cool family connection. They get to experience it on a random scheduled week. You love when that happens. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And the Helton family, wow, what a football family, of course. Your dad, Kim Helton, is assistant in college in the NFL, and of course the head coach at Houston. And Brian Ellis, their offensive coordinator, might be an honorary Helton. He's been with the Helton family for 15 of the last 17 years. You, co you coach with a guy long enough, you're kind of just, well, I don't know, like adopted almost yeah. into the football family. Yeah, really, really great performance by this Georgia Southern defense and a, a big-time win for this Georgia Southern team. We talked about it coming in. Both these teams still in contention for the Sun Belt, e Sun Belt East. James Madison in first right now, but they can't participate in the Sun Belt Championship game. So Georgia Southern with a win right now will be tied for second with Old Dominion in the East. 
We got that game coming up in a couple weeks. Georgia Southern's going to move into bowl eligibility too. Looking to make their sixth bowl appearance this season. A program that transitioned to FBS back in 2014. A program with a lot of history, six time FCS national champions. It's one of the things that drew Clay Helton to this program was the timeout. rich tradition. Georgia Southern, that's their third and final timeout of the half. This will be a 30 second timeout. Please reset the game clock to 101, 101. Thank you. And he told us this is a good a gold mine for recruiting too. Yeah, the footprint of the state of Georgia. You can you know recruit the state and still sleep in your bed at night. Yeah. You know, you don't have to go very far, but you see the, the upcoming schedule for Georgia Southern, Texas State, who's having a great year. DJ Kinney, their new head coach, has got them rocking and rolling. Marshall's a very tough opponent. And then Old Dominion, who we just talked about, who if they're, you know, still uh so with only one loss in a couple weeks, that game could potentially decide the East. So a lot to play for for Georgia Southern coming up. And then, of course, App State, who, yeah, Georgia State is their rival, but their biggest rival of all time would be App State. Yeah, that, 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 that rivalry goes back really far, back to the FCS days. And, and uh, you know, that, that's been one of the better rivalries in, in college football for a long time. Those two duking it out for... FCS national championships in the 90s and early 2000s. The punt goes to the seven yard line, 51 seconds on the clock. It's amazing. You look around the conference of the Sun Belt and with conference expansion and new teams, you know, you got JMU who's ranked. We had their game earlier. That defensive line and that defense is unbelievable. Real deal. I mean, giving up single digit points. I mean, that's like Georgia asked a couple years ago when they had five first round picks on their defense. You look at Marshall. I mean, this Sun Belt is, it is deep. It is tough. There's no really off weeks. Completes the pass, the pass to Jakari Carter. If you're Georgia State, what do you take away from this one? Well, you're going to look at the tape and you're going to go, man, we moved the ball. You know, but we just turned the ball over too many times. It, it's hard to win. It's almost impossible to win when you turn the ball over three times. You're not going to win many games being that reckless with the football. And one of those turnovers leading to a pick six and a touchdown. And they've got a tough one. James Madison coming up next for this Georgia State program. Yeah, it only gets harder, doesn't it? The turnovers tonight was what shocked me the most for Georgia State just because they were so good at protecting the football coming in. Incomplete and stops it with five seconds left. But the Peach State the rivalry is the pass is incomplete. The receiver was out of bounds. Three second down. Last three meetings have gone to Georgia State, but that changes tonight. Re really impressive win for Georgia Southern on both sides of the ball. And I think Clay Helton has got a lot to feel good about. On a short week, both these teams, especially Georgia State, coming off a late game on the road, turning around, then traveling again on the road. I know they'll be ready to kind of get back, get healthy, get rested, and get ready to go for a really good JMU team. Georgia Southern Bowl eligible again in their first win over Georgia State since 2019.
Fans jumping over the stands to rush the field. The Peach State going to Georgia Southern right now over Georgia State. You think this rivalry means something? It means a lot. It means a lot to the coaches. It means a lot to the players. They talked about it all week. And uh, it means a lot to the fan base and the student body here at Statesboro tonight. Well, Georgia Southern gets it done. 44 to 27 over Georgia State. That's your final from Statesboro.